All right, my friends. I want to welcome you to this video, and if you are a normal subscriber, um, maybe this is not going to be interesting content for you. Uh, this is kind of travel related because I am in the Philippines, but this is going to be like a long video. Um, partially for me, and partially for anybody who's looking to have a kid in the Philippines, You've got a kid on the way. That's who it's going to apply to. So most most of my normal subscribers, I don't know if you're going to find this interesting. It's a little bit long. I left a lot in there again, just for for my own selfish purposes, where I can take a look back at this video later on. Um, but if you are having a kid over here, then you know maybe maybe it's good content. It's uh, probably it's I say I'm probably going to run an hour and a half on this video. And it's just my experience about, you know, having our having our kid here in the Philippines. And we did have him in here in Angeles City. And I'll talk about the reasons uh, behind that as we go through the video. So I just want to kind of throw a preface out there that, hey, this is not a, really a, one of my normal, you know, having a great time travel type videos. Uh, this is our, you know, little... Um, view into our personal experience um, having our, our baby boy over the past few days so I hope you enjoy it if, uh, if it's applicable to you and if not there's 200 and something other videos on my channel please check one of those out and if you're not a subscriber bottom right hand corner of your screen hit that overstay road sign and become a subscriber and without further ado Let's jump right into um, what we've got to offer you today about having a kid in the Philippines. Thanks for joining me. All right, folks. It's going to be a hotel review. Just joking. This ain't the hotel room, folks. This is uh, our private room at the hospital where my wife just gave birth to our baby boy. So I figured I would show you around the uh, our private room here. And at this particular hospital, uh, this room is 1,800 pesos per night. So you're looking at $36 a night roughly less than 40 bucks a night and I just point out the amenities here you got a telephone right there I'm not sure if it does calls out or just in-house got the old nurses call button you know just a regular hospital bed Over here, do you have a ref? I got an aircon and I got a TV with several cable channels. Right over here, we got a little couch and actually a view of the parking lot if we open that up. Got a little table right there. So it's a typical um, hospital room. I say typical, I mean. I haven't been in a hospital room in the U.S. in years, so I don't even know what they look like these days. I've got a little easy chair over there where I can chill out and watch TV when the old lady gets brought in here. Here's the uh, CR. Sup, people. I'm shooting on this uh, RX100 Mark V, if you're wondering. I'm trying to give it another fair shake. And do have hot water and Helen of Troy packed me a bag but we didn't have any extra soap so I had to dig into uh, the baby stuff and I used that milk wash and folks my hair and my skin feels wonderful I mean let me let me let me give a plug here to this shit baby bundle milk wash and I hope that shit's for your skin and not clothes, but whatever it is, 
That shit has me feeling fresh, soft, and crisp. So there you go. There's there's a look around. Now this building here was uh, I think it's been around since 1990, and a lot of you know the condition of the building sort of reflects it. But they are doing renovations, and it was kind of funny because when I did the admission paperwork for my wife, they made you basically sign a form that said. You know, we understand the hotel, or not the hotel, the hospital is under renovation. And you may hear hammering, drilling, sawing, you know, be aware. We're, we're renovating the place and people are working. And you do. But folks, this hospital here, even though the building might be a little dated, when you peel back the layers and you get into places like the ultrasound uh, room or you go to uh, the nursery over here with the babies. All right, once, once, once you walk through the halls of a little bit of a dated building, but you peel the layers back, you got professionals up in there. You got professionals with uh, modern equipment. And once you get in there and see what they're, you know, what, what the, uh, the people and the actual equipment behind the medical treatment, um, I had confidence. But if you just walk into this older building, you're looking around, you're like, man, I don't know about this. But then once you realize, hey man, they got, they got, uh, they got professional staff. They do have, uh, you know, at least in the ultrasound room, they have brand new equipment. You know, when you, when you step when you stepped into the healthcare aspect of it, shit, it was like I was back in the States. And they're renovating the building. So overall, this is AUF Medical Center, um, Angeles University Foundation Medical Center. Um, I would say it's a, you know, it's not a expensive top of the line where you know the rich go to type hospital I think it's uh, like an upper middle class middle class upper middle class type hospital is definitely a lot better than most of the hospitals I've been in and that's why I chose a place and so overall my experience here okay overall my experience here has been positive. Um, you know, every hospital you go to in every country, things are done a little bit different. You'll be like, why do they do things like that? Well, hey, it's different countries, different cultures, different, just different way of doing things. But, um, you know, I base things off of uh, the overall experience. And so far, folks, I've had a great experience um, here at AUF. Uh, with the staff, with the level of care, uh, the cost, and I'm going to set my camera up on a tripod here, kick back in this easy chair, and I'm going to talk about, uh, just talk about some of the prices and talk about, you know, my experience about having a child in the Philippines, because uh, a lot of people ask me about it, and right now I've got nothing but time. I was watching that Transformers movie, but it went off. So uh, I was like, you know what? Let me get this camera out and talk to it. What a great time for a video. All right, give me a sec. I'm going to put this thing on a tripod and kick back in that easy chair right there. And let's get it on. All right, my friends. Sitting here in a little private hospital room right here in this easy chair and it's comfortable I'm gonna tell you I got a little stool out here I just showed you it's so much is comfortable the air con over there is cold as hell you can hang icicles up in this fucking room right now which it's okay cause I got a little hello kitty blanket here at a bar from the, from the ladies and Tonight has been a junk food night. 
due to the circumstances. I was in 7-Eleven down there. There's actually a 7-Eleven in, in this hospital. You know, 7-Eleven is over in this region everywhere. They're just a way of life. All right, so, so a lot of the female viewers have asked me about, you know, hey, what's it like to have a baby in the Philippines? So let me start out back when, uh, I'll try to pop the plastic off this uh, tee right here. Back uh, when my old lady first got pregnant, she was going to a clinic uh, down near the village. Now, in the Philippines, you have hospitals like anywhere else in the world. But way out in the province, you have these birthing centers, birthing clinics. And, you know, a lot of them are nothing more than, you know, just a concrete block building very rudimentary uh, medical equipment inside there and staffed by a midwife but you know it's hard for people from the west to believe it but there's still women here who have kids at home and up until a few years ago a lot more chicks did it but the government I don't know if it came down from the national government but the, the story that I was told years ago was um, that my buddy was saying he said the damn mayor where he was at came down with it and said hey there's no more having kids at home because these kids aren't getting their birth certificates done they're obviously not getting any care you know and there's uh you know if there's complications you know the mother and or the child are dying you know so the way he told me this is i don't know eight nine years ago that where he was living the mayor said hey you can't have kids in your house anymore Yo, bitches, take your ass to the damn birthing clinic or the hospital. So I don't know. I don't know if it came down from the uh, the government in Manila, whatever. But you know, you still have chicks here trying to uh, trying to have kids at home, or they go to the uh, birthing clinic. It's very rudimentary health care there with a midwife because they don't have the money they can't afford it so when my wife started out going she went to this clinic and basically they went in there took her blood pressure took her pulse told her to take some vitamins right I mean it's I guess better than nothing but it's not real care there's no ultrasound in there they're not doing blood work and of course, you know, it costs, you know, 200 pesos, 300 pesos. So, you know, $4, five bucks. But what are you getting? You're not really getting true medical care. Now she could take her ass down to the next town to, um, you know, pretty le legitimate hospital. And that's where we would have had the child had we stayed down there. But I'll give you for example, girl in her village had a baby and I think uh, it cost her 6,000 pesos which is like 120 bucks that was the entire hospital bill 6,000 pesos so you're talking compared to healthcare in the west it's like you know really how in the hell do you have a kid for 120 bucks but you do um, so I thought about it and I said, you know, you know, I had a lot of different reasons for coming north up to Manila and Angeles City. And actually me and my wife were over in Thailand, you know, and she was doing prenatal care for a couple months over there in Thailand. You know, Thailand, the medical care, especially at the hospital we go to over there is legit. I mean, it's better than the U.S. It's legit. But when we decided to come back to the Philippines and have the baby here because it's just easier to do the birth certificate, you know, we only have to deal with uh, we only have to deal with one embassy. Where if we'd have had the kid in Thailand, we'd have had to deal with the Philippine embassy and the U.S. embassy, you know, getting the birth certificate and the paperwork straight. So we decided to come back. 
And I said, you know what? Um, I don't want to have a kid down in the village. I want to be at a no shit real hospital. Where are they going to be in Cebu, Manila, or Angeles City? The way the cookie crumbled, we ended up here in Angeles City. And ended up, you know, saying, all right, we're going to stay here for a while. Let's go find a doctor and, and see what we can do. So the first trip to a doctor, you know, the tricycle driver takes us to basically, I don't even know what it was. I don't know if it's a birthing clinic. I don't know if it was just a private office. I don't know. All I know is we beat on the door. Finally, some older lady opens the door. And it's like a square box. There's a little table. And there's like this little, you know, little, little examination table. And I'm like looking around. I'm like, yeah, we're, we're here to... Uh, see the doctor and uh, you know she needs to get an ultrasound and then I mean I knew when I stepped in I'm like this is not what I'm looking for it's like oh, okay let me do this I'm like you know what no, I'm sorry I'm looking for a hospital you know and the, the, not, not that it was the tricycle drivers fault or anybody's fault um, they, they weren't thinking like I was thinking I'm looking for a no shit legitimate hospital so finally we asked some ladies, I think I actually, actually asked the ladies over at Scorebirds, you know, where's a decent hospital? And they said, hey, go to uh, AUF, Angeles University Foundation. And so that's how we wound up over here. And we just went in, talked to, uh, talked to, uh, you know, information, and they just gave us a list of doctors, pick one. I just pick one off the list, go down the hallway, and the doctor was having a clinic and so that's how we picked a doctor and every time we went and saw the doctor it was uh, 500 pesos ten dollars paid ten dollars ten US dollars uh, for the doctor's visit when we, we started out I think she was going like once every two weeks whatever and then as time came closer um, she was going every week doctor's fee was 500 pesos 10 bucks if the doctor ordered blood work you know went downstairs had blood drawn come back later get the results in an hour it was roughly um, 18 to 1900 pesos it was about no correction it was uh It was 900 pesos, which was $18. So let's throw a nice round number out there, 20 bucks. 20 bucks for the blood work. So 10, uh, 10 for the doctor, 20 for the blood work, and then when we had to do the ultrasound, um, it, it varied, I guess, the type of ultras, ultrasound, or um, let's just put a nice round number on it. It was 1,500 pesos, which was uh, $30. So if we, if we came and saw the doctor and she ordered blood work and ordered an ultrasound, folks, we're looking at, what, 60 bucks? Did I add that up right? 10 to 20, that's 30 plus 30, yeah, 60 bucks. $60 for all that. You can't beat that. And the ultrasound, I mean, it's, like I said, it's equivalent to in the West. Folks are professional, new equipment, okay? They'd be at a professional lab uh, doing the same blood work you do in the U.S. So 60 bucks. You know, when we first started, we weren't coming every week. And as it got closer every week, 60 bucks a week. And that was, uh, that's really the prices. Now, it's obviously a lot more expensive in this hospital than if we had it down at, you know, had the child down at a maternity clinic. You know, it's dirt cheap there. But you're not getting the same level of care. check my phone I'm telling a long story to tell you what I'm doing sitting in this chair 
so uh, that's my buddy. I hit him up a minute. As it gets time, you now throughout her pregnancy, especially when she got to this doctor, it's a female doctor, and she told her, she said, "Look, you're a little bit big. Looks like you're eating too much. You cut down on the rice. You know, cut down on this. No sweets. No no sugary drinks." But my wife is stubborn. She's stubborn, and her pregnancy, you know, obviously she's hungry. You know, got a. <laughs> just a, a hunger all the time as this pregnancy progressed and so the doctor would preach to her I would preach to her and then finally she just said I don't care what anybody says I'm hungry I'm gonna eat what I want to eat and she would just go to town go to Mong and Asal every day get unlimited rice get three orders of rice then stop by Jollibee get a goddamn mango pie couldn't stop her it's always hungry always eating well, guess what? You know, she's a tiny girl. It's like five foot three, 100, what, 90, 90, 95 pounds before she got pregnant. She's a small girl. So, you know, the past few weeks, we've been coming every week. And they, they told her, you know, the baby looks a little big. Now, when you say big, what the girl is telling me is the average Filipino baby is like two, two point something kilos, right? You're looking at like less than a six pound baby, five and a half pound, six pound baby. And she said, you know, the U.S. average, you know, is eight pounds, eight and a half pound babies, whatever. So I think due to a combination of the fact, number one, I'm American, even though I'm a small guy, you know, Due to my genes and due to my wife eating every damn thing that she saw, uh, the baby was uh, we, it, it was getting too big. So we came in today, and this this is what happened today. Today's Saturday, uh, January nineteenth. Text the doctor this morning, get an appointment, and it's her due date. But what we figured was we were going to come in and get a quick appointment and she's going to say, hey, you know, if you don't have the baby by, say, next Tuesday, then, <coughs> you know, you got to come in and get admitted. So we we had all our bags packed. A bag for my old lady, a bag for the baby, a bag for my daughter, a bag for me. We had these bags already, you know, sitting by the door. So if she went into labor, we were very well prepared, had all the documents together. But today we thought we were going to come do a quick checkup and we had just planned on doing this quick checkup, listen to the doctor tell us, hey, you know, you've got to have it by next week or we're going to either induce or do a C-section. So we just thought we were going to stop in and then we planned on going out to eat Mexican tonight. So really the whole time all I was thinking about was what I'm going to order. You know, this dude told me, uh, you know, go check out Iguana's Mexican restaurant, right? It's right up the road walking distance from my condo so I was excited about going and trying out some new Mexican food I've been talking about it all day we get here and the doctor first thing she does is order an ultrasound go to the ultrasound and they're like you know by estimation you know the child is a uh, he's full term maybe a day overdue and he's eight and a half to eight and three quarter pounds like holy shit so once they reported that to the doctor the doctor's like you know we're, we're leaning towards uh, an immediate c-section we're like what so you know she came in and evaluated it and that's what she ordered we're doing a c-section right now lottie dotty everybody get ready i mean you barely had a few minutes just to give her a hug and uh you know say we'll see you on when you get out so they took her back, and of course I had my daughter, I had Helen and Troy here. Well, I figured it was going to be three or four hours by the time they get a prep and get it done. So I told, I, I was waiting to talk to the doctor, and I said, look, I'm going to run home. I'll be back in about one hour. I'm going to get all the baby stuff, and is there anything else you need for me? And she's like, no, you don't. You, you, King, don't go anywhere. We're taking her back right now. We're doing this right now. You need to stay. 
And I was like, well, that's only, you know, I, I just got to run over there and get everything. We don't have anything here. We didn't plan on coming here and having the kid tonight. And she's like, well, that's too bad. Just You just stand by. So I was like, all right, I'll wait. So meanwhile, I go, and the ladies in the nursery are like, hey, where's the baby's clothes, the diapers, you know, everything. And I'm like, look, it's at the house. You know, but the doctor told me to stay, to stay put. And she's like, well, as soon as you can, we need that. Because when the baby comes, you know, you have to provide all that. And I said, no problem. We got everything lined up. I just got to go get it. So I told Helen and Troy, I said, look, saddle up, take the baby home, pack that bag, send it back on a tricycle. So we got a couple of trusted tricycle drivers on a speed dial. So she called this guy up. He's the nicest dude. I'd put his number out there, but shit, he'd, he'd be so damn busy, I wouldn't be able to. He wouldn't be able to work for me, so I'm not gonna do it. We called this gentleman, JoJo, and she said, JoJo, come pick me up at the hospital. So JoJo zooms over here, and you know, like they had already taken taken my wife to the back at, the, at this point. JoJo zooms over here, scoops up Helen of Troy, scoops up my daughter, zooms him to the condo. She packs this, uh, she packs a bag. I told her, hey, just put it all in my aviator's kit bag. Great fucking piece of equipment, folks. If you don't have an aviator's kit bag left over, you know, it's a parachute bag, whatever you want to call it. You know, you jump out of a plane with the U.S. military, you pull that aviator's kit bag, and that's what you pack your parachute in, you know, to hump it off the drop zone. But I've had mine since, uh, what, damn, 19, 1990, 1991, whatever, I think 91. One of the greatest fucking pieces of luggage, luggage, pieces of luggage in history. So I told her, I said, you put all the bags in there, plus some blankets, plus this, I zip that son of a bitch up, give it to JoJo, tell him to bring it back to the hospital. And sure enough, that's what, that's what happened. So... But while I'm waiting on JoJo to get here with the bag, this young young kid comes up and says, Sir, you need to go down to the nursery. I'm like, why? I already got all my paperwork done. He's like, no, the baby's already born. I was like, what? I'm, I mean, it was like less than, it was like an hour. So I zoomed down there, and sure enough, you know, the little whippersnapper is, uh, is already out. They said everything's good. We're, you know, cleaning him up in the bag. Where's his clothes? I said, look, I got my man JoJo in a tricycle zooming it over here. So she said, all right, we're, we're still getting them slicked out. So I ran downstairs, grabbed a kit bag from uh, JoJo, and brought it up. And about that time, they were pulling the blinds up, so I got to see them all wrapped up. They wrap them up so tight. It, it, you know, you can't even tell they got legs. They just wrap them up. It looks like a sack of flour sitting there with a head popped out of it. It's funny as hell, you know. They just wrap them up so tight. His little blanket. So, you know, he's sitting there chilling, sleeping, whatever, a little whippersnapper. And so I gave the, uh, the ladies in the nursery you know, everything that they needed out of that bag. And then they said, yeah, well, you know, the doctor came by to talk to you, but you weren't around. And I'm like, well, no shit, because you guys told me to get this damn clothes. I was down there getting the damn bag. So it was a little bit discombobulated, and it's my fault, but it's not. I mean, if we had shown up with all the gear that we needed, I'd have just been chilling in the room, you know. But because we showed up thinking that, hey, quick checkup, we'll see you next week, thinking about going to Mexican food. We got caught with our pants down. But thanks to JoJo, Helen of Troy, getting over there, getting everything together. Uh, the little baby does have all his stuff back there now. They said in a few hours, I'll bring the old lady up here. And again, she's in recovery. She did, did, you know, did a C-section. So in a few hours, I'll bring the old lady up here. And in the morning, once the doctor checks everything out, they'll bring the baby up. But he's fine, um, you know, just a little butterball, look like a sack of flour sitting there. So I'm just chilling. You know, my daughter and Helen of Troy back at the condo, 
got her settled in for the night and so right now I'm just chilling in this hospital room talking to this camera excited as hell uh, as far as the uh, the bill okay now this room is a private room it's uh, 1800 pesos per night so that's what's 40 minus 4 so this is 36 bucks a night for this private room I don't know what a semi-private room I think it's two people figured as pro probably what 25 bucks and if you just go in the ward you know the open like barracks type bay with you know nothing but beds and I'm not sure how much it is but I did ask the lady <coughs> excuse me I asked the girl I said how many babies were born today and she said yours is number five so they have five five babies born today on the 19th when we went to get the room she said actually we're filled up but we got uh, a patient being discharged so like 20 30 minutes later they called us said the room was ready folks all the nurses here um, you know, professional been very nice to us uh, I can't say enough good things about the nurses and the, the staff uh, I'm really glad that we you know the long type uh, adventure and the circumstances that got us here um, I'm, I'm actually happy that we landed here instead of trying to you know be way out in the province and uh, you know here and this is the reason I mean here she had to have a c-section and wanted to get it done now um, you know because everything's good right now you know she didn't want to wait and you know have to react to uh, something I want to say something you know if she, if she goes in labor and she can't you know uh, the baby's too big or whatever then, then you're reacting to a problem so she's like no we're gonna go proactive we're gonna do it right now everything's good and if you're way the hell out in the province you know what are you gonna do you got to get an ambulance and then you know here here your wife's in labor and you're riding down a bumpy ass road for four hours to get to a real hospital um, that just wasn't what was on my agenda wasn't my prerogative to do that so I'm glad we landed here uh, overall my experience at AUF has been very positive and I want to thank all the staff here for taking good care of, uh, of you know my old lady and the baby and uh, you know taking the, the time and the patience to uh, you know because folks I'm you know I'm not from here right and the most of the time there's they're speaking in Tagalog right and so here comes a foreigner now they gotta they flip over to English they gotta kind of slow it down because I don't know what the procedure is um, you know just just little things so everybody here has been uh, very nice to me very nice to my wife and I can't thank everybody here enough so if you're in Angeles City you know find yourself in uh, same situation you know, your wife girlfriend's pregnant um, this is a this is a good option all right hold on folks low smart Hey buddy, how you doing man? Hold on, let me stop my camera here. Folks, I'll be right back with you. Okay. Here we go, here's the Fatima. How you feeling baby? I feel okay, but it's her. Oh, poor thing. Poor thing. Poor right. thing. And she's got the IV going on. She is okay, my friends. Fatima is okay. Always okay. Oh, yeah, this girl's doing good. Yes, yeah, so I don't even know where I was at last night on my on my little chat with, uh, with the phone. I was just talking and the action broke down, so, <clears throat> like, quickly. 
quickly the baby was born they called me down to the nursery come check him out so I went down there he was good and you know a few hours later brought the old lady up and you know baby's still down in the nursery they said uh, you know usually they like to keep him in the nursery until the mom can get up and walk they'll bring him up to the room he's a healthy little whippersnapper Everybody's laughing about his name, Forrest G. <laughs> I love it. I guess the first thing said when he was born, somebody said, "My God, that's a fat baby." You know, most most uh, Filipino babies are a lot smaller than the average American baby, and little Forrest is a average American baby. I can't remember exact exact weight, but he's, you know. The comment was, man, that's a fat baby. And then somebody else yelled out, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> so we got them all stirred up, you know, about his name and everything. So he's doing good. I got, uh, you know, got up this morning, got me a shower. And an old lady can just have like fluids right now. But she is starving for some jelly bean. Yeah. So whenever they clear, <laughs> whenever they clear this this girl, I gotta go get her some jelly bean next door. Should be so exciting. Here's a here's a look around outside our window. Got a nice view of the parking lot. It is a beautiful sunny day with a breeze blowing through. And I'm not exactly sure where the uh, church was, or is. It may be that church right there. But this morning, I see two churches. There's two steeples. Or two crosses, what have you. Well, we heard church bells going on. What a way to wake up. After having a baby the night before, I wake up to a beautiful sunny day and church bells. And that's what's going on, my friends. Got the uh, beautiful Helen of Troy. Gonna bring bring my daughter up here this afternoon, hang out with us. I figure we'll be here two days. I'll show you where I slept after uh, after the old lady got here. I just slept on that couch right there, like a rock. Oh, like a rock. What happened, I was actually, I actually crashed out in that bed right there. While I was waiting for stuff to go down, or while I was waiting for her to get up in the room, and they texted me and said, hey, you need, can you bring the milk down to the nursery? And also zoned out. I looked at the text and went back to sleep. I feel bad. And like 20 minutes later, I just sat up in the bed, you know, like you're late for work, like you overslept. Grab the phone, and look down. I'm like, oh shit, you know. It take 20 minutes ago. They told me to bring that milk down there, so I run down there and give them the milk, and all is good. But yeah, they they text me. I just went back to sleep. But today I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling crisp. A beautiful day. Everybody's doing well. And just a good day, my friends. some sights and sounds of Angeles City during the day.
Check out that moon, folks. That's a badass moon right there. I don't think the camera's gonna do it justice, but that's a badass moon over Angeles City. Up in the Philippines, my friends. Remember, this is my friend. No problem, my friend. How you doing? Yeah, going to AUF Hospital, man. Yeah, no problem with this one. We got a door here. I can't. Oh, going to AUF Hospital, Angeles University Foundation Hospital. get out of here today we used to word about the birth certificate like you know the first night they brought us the the worksheet for the birth certificate and you basically fill that out with all the information but it's it's just the worksheet they'll give you four copies of the birth certificate in with the packet so you fill everything out on the worksheet and on the uh, birth certificate <clears throat> Excuse me, a little cough going on here. On the birth certificate, you just have the mother sign on the one block where it says signature. You don't print anything on the birth certificate because the office types it up, up on the sixth floor. So the actual birth certificate, the only people that sign, uh, the mom signs and the uh, attending physician signs. And then um, you take it up to the sixth floor at this particular hospital. They type one up, you verify it, and then they type the other three copies. Uh, there was no charge <coughs> for, them to, for them typing it up. You have to go to City Hall in Angeles City on the second floor. And basically pay a fee, and then the, as the father, you're going to sign the back of it. There's an affidavit on the back of the birth certificate, basically accepting parental custody or paternal custody. What's the word? Paternal, <clears throat> whatever. Basically acknowledging that you're the father. you got to pay a few fees. And what the lady told me was <clears throat> to make sure you tell them to endorse it. And then you'll get it back in like 30 days. Um, that's what you need. You know, if you're a foreign guy trying to get paperwork done for the baby at your embassy. So she said basically what they'll do, they they keep they keep two copies and they will give you two copies back. One copy you have to bring to the hospital, and then you have one copy. But she said to tell them to endorse it. So I'm not exactly sure how the flow is going to go. But once I get over there, I'll update the video. And here's Forrest. And here's his other bunk mate. Fox is day three here at the hospital. And... Looks like my wife's gonna get discharged today, which is good. Uh, she woke up today feeling much better. She's able to get up on her own, walk around, change her bandage. So she's doing a lot better today on day three. And they've already started uh, you know, prepping everything to discharge uh, my wife. We have to wait on the pediatrician to verify that the uh, that the baby is okay to leave as well I guess in some occasions you know they'll discharge the patient but uh, the baby has to stay for a few more days but it looks like we're gonna be good to go just waiting on the word from uh, the baby's pediatrician that he's good to be discharged so it looks like tonight we might be in the condo chilling 
and we're looking forward to that because uh, day three, I think we're all bored out of our minds here. We're ready to take the baby and go home. But it's been a pleasant stay. We've got uh, prescriptions from old lady. And all I'm waiting on now is uh, the pediatrician and the bill. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the bill is obviously not going to be anything compared to what we would be facing in America, in the West. But I'm interested to uh, see what the final number is. Go ahead and get that shit cleared out and roll out of here. So I'll update you as soon as we, we figure it out. But uh, i got to go down to the pharmacy, pick up about five or six prescriptions. And just wait on the baby's doctor to uh, give them the all clear. We're ready to take a tricycle, my friends. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, we're taking a little, little force home in a tricycle. You're gonna roll strong up in a tricycle. First ride in a vehicle is in a, in a tricycle. But, uh, yeah. That's what we're waiting on right now. It's a beautiful sunny day. I've been sitting here on this couch just soaking up the rays all day. I actually took a nap with the sun on my face. But three days in the hospital, <clears throat> that's enough. We're bored as shit, we're ready to roll. It's day three. I just went down and cleared the bill on my wife and the baby. Got the release, so I dropped the release off at the nursery. They said, all right, go up, get the mom released, and come down and pick up the baby, get some last minute uh, instructions, and we're gonna be out of here tonight. So I am excited about that. And uh, clearing the bill, it was an efficient process. Went ahead and just swiped the credit card, credit card machine working, no problem. It did charge me an extra 3% due to uh, paying with a credit card. I'm not angry about that uh, due to the convenience of it. I will talk about the, the costs later on, but what I was telling these ladies right now that I had a, uh, a number in my mind that I had budgeted from the get-go and uh, actually come in under that budget, what I was expecting, so I'm not the bit uh, shocked, surprised, or upset. I'm actually... Um, Please with the bill and we're cleared out so in a few minutes here we are going to be out of this little room that we've been in and it has served us good aviators kit bag right there as I was talking about earlier in the video best piece of luggage in the world right there one of the best pieces of US military gear ever designed that damn things over 20 something years old well, almost 30 years old. Hell, I don't know, about 30 year old bag. That thing is still kicking. So we're about to say goodbye to this little room. Here's my ladies over here. All right, baby, are you ready to leave the hospital? Yeah. You ready to roll? Mm -hmm. She's got a nice dress on. She's already started to uh, lose weight in her face, her little chubby cheeks, and starting to look sexy. My goodness, and Helen of Troy looking sexy over there too. Yeah, she, she's always, well, both of them are always sexy, my friends. Okay, ladies, you guys ready to go? Yeah. All right, folks, next stop, going down to pick up Forrest G. Cool. All right, we're going to pick up Forrest G. You excited? <laughs> All right. All right, there's little Forrest, ready to go home. You ready to go, buddy? Here he is. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you so much. All right, so little Forrest got his own little cart. Yay! Forrest, you're leaving the hospital. We're gonna take you home in a tricycle. Take a little horse home in the tricycle.
Taking a little Force G home in the tricycle. Asked my old lady if she wanted to take a grab or a tricycle. She said she wanted to ride a tricycle. So, little Forrest, first ride outside the hospital. Taking a tricycle from AUF over to Horizon Tower 1. Little Forrest, welcome him into the world. And we are rolling. stay plus uh, my wife had to have a cesarean a c-section so if you have a normal birth over there it's obviously not going to be this much and also we had a private room so let me just break down the bill because for everybody that's into numbers I mean obviously we're all into numbers we want, we want to know how much right so I will give you I will give you the spoiler up front. Okay, let me give you the spoiler up front of how much the entire bill was. Now this includes my wife and the baby. Because there's two separate bills, you know, in, uh, two patients. But I'm going to tell you the total bill in U.S. dollars for a three-day hospital stay, private room. C-section, um, you know, all the physician's fees, the pediatrician's fees, the nursery, the meds, everything that we did inside that hospital, $1,873.34. Okay, you say just nice round number, 1900 bucks. Okay, so $1,900 out the door. I don't know anybody over there. Um, that's the total amount, and I am, uh, I'm okay with it. I had budgeted in my mind between 2500 to 3000 and I said, you know, you know, uh, real complications, maybe 3500 but I, I had it in my mind, I was looking at 2500 just based on conversations and a little bit of research, and so when... We went down there to pay the bill, and it came in under 1900. I was, I, I was okay with it. So let me just break down a couple of these numbers right quick, and then I'm about to jump off here, and talk to my mom. I was talking to my mom and fired up this video, and I'm like, why the hell did I fire up this video? I was talking to my mom. So mom, I'm sorry. Hold on just a second. Let me get through this. Right now it's quiet. <clears throat> All right. We'll start out with uh, my wife as the patient. Um, it's got on here for the hospital charges, admission fee, 
doesn't have anything there, but it says Central Supply, that's 2,000 pesos, that's like 40 bucks. Uh, delivery Room Central Services, 1387 pesos. Okay, so we're less than $30. There's some miscellaneous charges, but let's let's talk about the OR charges. The operating room charges are fifteen thousand. Um, that's roughly three hundred bucks. So three hundred dollars for the OR. The room itself was five thousand four hundred. Um, that's roughly what one hundred twenty, forty, sixty, eight, eight hundred. Hundred dollars, hundred and ten bucks, somewhere in there. The uh, total physicians fees. Now we had four different physicians on here, and so I'm assuming it, it doesn't really list them out. But you've got obviously the obstetrician. I'm sure you have an anesthesiologist, but anyhow, there's four four doctors listed on here, and that came out to sixty four. Thousand four hundred fifty pesos. So you're looking at over a thousand dollars on the physician's fees. So the total came out to be for my wife eighty nine three seventy six. All right, eighty nine three seventy six. And most of the times in the Philippines, you just use a fifty fifty to one fifty pesos is one dollar. But let's let's just use fifty. Divided by 50. Uh, so $1,787.52. So the bulk of the bill was on my, my wife's side of the bill. And then you go to the baby's uh, itemized bill. And basically it's nominal fees, but they did charge $70 for. Uh, the laboratory fees and what the lady told me she said look uh, well before he was even born she said uh, for 3500 they do all the blood tests the uh, the immunizations that he has to have basically the full meal deal of what you know you, you do for a newborn baby was 3500 pesos and she was saying you know you can do it with Phil Health other places whatever I'm like no just do it 3500 that's 70 bucks so seventy dollars took care of everything that he needed, you know, out the door. So his bill was nine four two eight point six six. We'll divide that by fifty. One hundred eighty eight bucks. So less than two hundred on his side. Uh, but nice round number. Less than nineteen hundred dollars out the door. If you factor in the medication that she had to have, she's taking like. One, two, three, four meds. So I picked them up at the pharmacy. Like a grand total of uh, 600 pesos, 12 bucks. So let's just factor in 20 bucks for the meds, right? So that, that brings it up to a nice round number of $1,900. Somebody's phone's going off over here, fucking up my video. Whose phone is that, baby? Alright, hold on, folks. Hold on. Oh, shit. Knocking over beer cans. Alright, folks, I'm back. <coughs> Alright, so where the hell was I? $1,900 out the door, C section, three day stay, private room. I'm satisfied with the care, the competency, the professionalism, the level of care. Um, you know, obviously, like I said, in any country, any different culture you go to, things are done a little bit differently. But you can say that about any hospital from state to state in the U.S. I got no problems. I got a healthy baby. My wife is already up and, uh, you know, jumping around like a bunny rabbit. Um, I got no complaints whatsoever. We do have a follow-up appointment, obviously, next week with the pediatrician and her obstetrician. And looking forward to that, make sure everything's okay. But there you have it. So, 1900 bucks. I like nice round numbers, folks. Let's just say 2000 all right? If we just stayed a couple more nights. Two grand. Two grand out the door. 
to have a baby in the Philippines at a, a, a very competent hospital, you know, upper, I would say it's, it, I wouldn't say it's a five-star hospital, because there are some more expensive hospitals around, you know, that, that cater to, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the richer folks in the world, whether you're local or foreign, whatever. There are some better hospitals as far as, uh, you know, they're more expensive. What am I trying to say? As far as the accommodation, the building, whatever. But folks, at AUF, Angeles uh, University, what was it, Angeles University Foundation Medical Center, I, I am uh, very pleased with with the service, uh, the professionalism, and the bill. I got no qualms about the bill. And again, we could have, we could have had this child down at the birthing clinic down in the province for 120 bucks. But if there's a complication, she needed to have a C-section, there was any issues, you know, uh, folks, the only option is to get in an ambulance and try to get to a real hospital. The, the reality is here in the Philippines, a lot of people don't have that luxury. They don't have the money to do, to do that. They go to the birthing clinic, and it's uh, whatever comes down the pipe. You know, kind of something. Whatever. I mean, whatever, whatever happens, it's going to happen there at the birthing clinic. And I personally have, you know, been around and uh, out in the province when, you know, the mother and the baby have died at the birthing clinic. And that's just the way it is. It's sad, but you know, not everybody in the world has access to U.S. level uh, hospitals, and people die. And if it's a normal birth, you know, they're quite. I mean, come on, you know, babies being delivered and being born is the most natural thing. It's been around for you know our, our two million years. But if there's a complication. Guess what? That's when you need some true medical professionals in modern medicine. Uh, okay, so AUF, thumbs up. If you're here in Angeles City, um, you know, and you want that level of care, I do recommend them. If you're, if you got 10 million bucks in the bank, well, there's another hospital like right over here on the base somewhere that they somebody said was, you know, higher level of care, higher class, whatever. But uh, if you're just kind of a, you know, average dude like me, I recommend AUF. As a matter of fact, while I was there, I did run into another American guy that was uh, just getting discharged uh, with, with his baby. They had been there, I think he said, eight days. So I talked to him and uh, had a conversation with him. He seemed to be satisfied with the level of care as well. And had a healthy baby, leaving out, going home. And so that's my experience, folks. Uh, let me check my notes here to see if I made any more notes about what I was going to talk about. Okay, oh, Phil Health. The Phil Health is like the, the insurance program, the government insurance plan, what have you. And uh, my old lady didn't have Phil Health. Okay, she just didn't go through the process or have the documents that she needed, whatever. But when I talk to the doctor, she's like, oh, you need to get Phil Health, you know, because I'll be able to discount it 10 or 20,000 pesos. You know, 10,000 is 200 bucks, so uh, 20,000 would be $400. She's like, you know, that's a lot of money, you know, I can discount it. And she's like, you know, you can go over here to Robinson's or wherever it was at, and, you know, you got to stand in line, it's going to take all day. And. Folks, I'm not even standing in line all fucking day to save 200 bucks. Yes, I need the money. Yes, I want to save the money. I am not going to stand in a line with 300 people in line all damn day to do it. All right, my time is worth more than that, believe it or not. And so the doctor or somebody said, well, just find a person with a senior citizen's card. Because if they have a senior citizen's card, they just walk to the front of the line. So you can like sign an affidavit, let them handle your paperwork, and they can go up there and submit it. They don't gotta wait in line. And I'm like, I don't fucking know anybody with a senior citizen's card. What am I gonna do? Walk down the street and try to find an old person? Hey, do you have a senior citizen's card? If you do, you wanna make five bucks? Go take my paperwork. 
I said, fuck that. I ain't got time for that shit. Yeah, but it's 10,000 pesos. Fuck that. So this bill here was without Phil Health. This was just straight up paying out of my pocket. And I'm happy with it. And I still, I'm not, I'm not going to go spend a day of my life standing in line to get Phil Health to save a few dollars. I'm not going to do it. So that bill I quoted is without any insurance, without Phil Health. It's just walk in, pay out of your pocket. All right. But with Phil Health, you figure it would have been dropped down to about $1,500 US dollars. Um, all right, folks, that's, a, that's about all um, I got to say about it. Now, I did have some, some conflicting information from the other American dude about the birth certificate because what he told me was. After you go to the sixth floor and they type out this birth certificate, he told me that they had to take it to City Hall and basically get it registered and bring back a copy before they would release the child. And I was like, damn, man, that kind of puts us in a bind because my wife had a C-section. She's not mobile, not very mobile right now. But that didn't apply to us. I don't know what his situation was or if he just explained it wrong. But our situation, we did not have to do that. I took it to the sixth floor, I got the things typed up, they told me to go to City Hall within 30 days. They said, you have to go to City Hall within 30 days. We got discharged, no problem, so in the next couple days, we will go to City Hall, do the paperwork, and I'll update the video. Okay? All right, so my, my battery's about to go dead on this RX100. Don't last very long. So I will stop right now to the next segment of this video about my experience having a baby in the Philippines, my friends. Peace out for now. A beautiful Fatima, beautiful little forest jeep. My goodness, look at that boy. He's catching flies. Oh, that's so beautiful. Baby, so pretty. Thanks for having forest for me. My friends got to head over to City Hall to uh, try to get this birth certificate shit squared away. I got the beautiful Helen of Troy, the beautiful Fatima, already starting to go back down to her pre-pregnancy size. Looking absolutely beautiful. Little Forest G's right here. And a beautiful Helen of Troy. And Marquitos the King is on the camera. So we're finna take a tricycle and head on over there. Okay, look at that booty. <laughs> Alright, so here we are, Helen. Helen's busy talking on that fucking phone. She's doing cheese mosa with her family. I got beautiful Fatima right here, my goodness. And my man's getting me a trike, folks. We get a tricycle here. Not that one. And today I am shooting on the, uh, the big Sony camera. No external mic today, just with the onboard mic. And I love shooting on this old Sony. It's just so much easier. I mean, yeah, shooting on the iPhone is in my pocket. The RX100, you know, modern technology. But you cannot beat this old Sony. My man right here calling a trike for us. <laughs> That's straight up gangster right there. That's right. He got it. That man right there, large and in charge, my friends. And there went a jackass on them, one of them loud motorbikes. Yeah! All right, get the ladies up in the tricycle here. Get up in there, girl. Yeah. Just kidding. No problem. All right, my friend. Thank you very much. 
All right, thank you very much. Hey man, how are you today? I'm fine. All right, brother, we're going over to City Hall, okay? City Hall. City Hall next to Marquee Mall. Uh, See how this camera does on the tricycle with the wind noise and the uh, shaky conditions but this camera right here has got great optical image stabilization especially be a six six year old camera thing when I was using my iPhone to film my iPhone focused in on the guy's mirror so the whole the entire trip the footage was blurred so I had to be careful about where where I pointed the iPhone so I'm hoping I don't have the same problem I don't think I will on this big camera Got a slow roll, going with the flow, not trying to get too crazy. Sony the brand for my cameras 
I wish I, instead of the RX100, I would have bought the AX53, I think that is, the 4K camcorder. That's what I wish I would have bought. But, I did the research, and don't get me wrong, the RX100 is a great point and shoot pocket camera. It's like having a DSLR in your pocket. But that's not what I need. All I needed was an upgraded camcorder that shoots 4K, just like this guy I got in my hand, because it is a gem all around. You can hand this, you can hand this guy to anybody on the street and say, hey, push that button and hold it still, and you'll get great video. space for lease up there right above that walking street sign i should rent that and put fucking overstay road on there for like a month all right so we cut a left before walking street here's a police station right here police station four City Hall, which is right next to Marquee Mall. Uh, I think this building to the left, right here, my friend. I think, I think right here, but I'm not sure. I think right here. Right. It don't matter anywhere. I'll have to ask somebody where we're going. Right here's the tricycle parking over here. All right, thank you very much for the ride, my friend. We got Helen of Troy over here. About the man, I got the baby. All right, let me pay this gentleman. All right, folks, this is where we're going. Angeles City Hall. And it should be Angeles City, City Hall, second floor. <laughs> folks, here we are at the Civil Registry Office. And I want you to look at that typewriter right there. That is awesome. Something you don't see very much anymore in the West. But this is the second floor. It's called, uh, what's it called? This Civil Registry, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we're at Civil Registry and we just told her that we needed the birth certificate to be endorsed and we also need some certified copies. They're 50 pesos per certified copy. And she said, How many do you need? That's a dollar. I said, Give me 10. So at some point in his life, he's going to need certified copies of his birth certificate so a dollar a piece 
And just watch this right here. This is too cool. And I don't know what type of typewriter that is or how old that is, but it's got some age on it. And that is too cool. And I don't even need to tell you, this is a beautiful girl right here taking care of us. Absolutely stunning. And we got multiple typewriters. Check that out. You don't see that much anymore. Probably the best part and the most interesting part of this video is watching this lady type. If you're from my generation, you remember typewriters. But anybody after me, you've probably never seen a damn typewriter. This lady over here has got a typewriter as well. Too cool, my friends. And there's a Helen of Troy. And where we started out was this uh, booth number five right here. It says receiving and issuance of birth and marriage certificate. So we started at booth number five. Okay, folks, so this is the civil registry office right here. So we go to the civil registry office. They're going to type up on the back of the birth certificate your name. You're going to make sure everything is straight. You're going to sign it. And they're then going to give you these three little pieces of paper. They're going to give you your passport back. They will keep the mother's passport. And then we have to go downstairs and pay these fees. Now, once we pay these fees downstairs, we're going to come back up to the office right here. So right now we're going downstairs to pay the fees. And so we're standing in line right here. We go to 13. Once I paid, I got these receipts. Now I'm headed back upstairs to um, the same place we were just at. Electricity not available, but I got a light on my camera here. So look, folks, we came to number five. Then we had to go downstairs and pay. We came to number six signed some papers, then took them over to number seven, and now there's no electricity. That's the way it is, you know what? No electricity, it's no problem. Dude over here got a cell phone light. Just keep carrying on because the typewriter does not require electricity to work. So listen to that, it's still typing, it's still typing. If it was computerized, there would be no work going on, but no electricity. When you have an old-fashioned manual typewriter, you can still carry on business, my friend. Gotta love it. I love it. Love hearing them typewriters going off. No electricity, no lights. Now I got the light on. I'm trying to help her out, but look at this. That girl's so beautiful. My goodness, her husband's a lucky man. Nice warm day, my friends. Just a look around. There's Angeles City Hall. Jose P. Rizal. And we got the ladies over here. So we're gonna turn around. No, thank you, my friend. And I'm zoomed in here. Okay, so let me let me say a few words here. If I can get this dude to quit following me, fucking hassling me here. Okay, so basically, when when you get the uh, when you get the birth certificate from the hospital. You have 30 days to come to City Hall, right here behind me. City Hall is near Marquee Mall. And if this shithead don't stop bothering my family over here. <coughs> Sorry about that, folks. Hold on a second. This jackass right here. Hold on. I got to... My friend, we don't need your help. I don't know what you need, but just just don't bother my ladies. Thank you. All right. Fucking jackass. So, you bring the birth certificate here to City Hall, second floor. You're going to start out at window five. 
after you start out at window five, which is for the uh, newborn registration, you're gonna go down stairs, pay some fees. They're gonna give you like three pieces of paper. You pay the fees between windows 13 and 18. Take the receipts, you're gonna go back up, and you're basically gonna deal with window five, six, seven. You're gonna go into the actual registrar's office, get her to sign off, she's like the big boss. And once all that's done, okay, they're gonna give you a copy that you keep. They're gonna give you a copy to take to the hospital. And they're gonna give you X amount of certified copies that you requested. Now they're a buck a piece. I told them to give me 10. Now, if you're a foreign guy like myself and you're gonna try to get your child's citizenship over at your embassy or you're gonna try to get a passport, uh, a Philippine passport, you have to tell them that you want it endorsed. And hey, what, what window was endorsement? Is that number nine? That's window number nine. You're gonna go there and pay 130 pesos to a nice lady there. And she, like today is Friday. Today's Friday? Yeah. Sorry folks, this fucking jackass pissed me off. Today is Friday. And so I paid her 130 pesos and she told me to come back on Monday at 10 a.m. And she's going to give me what's called a transmittal. I'm going to grab that transmittal and I got to wait three weeks. And then we're going to go to, where do we got to pick that up in three weeks? Where, where's it at? No, in three weeks. San Fernando. San Fernando. Okay, so in three weeks, we've got to pick this up in San Fernando. So we, we have to have that transmittal in three weeks when we go to San Fernando. That's basically the flow. So I got one more, one more trip here on Monday to pick up that transmittal. I got to go back to the hospital, drop off that copy of the birth certificate to uh, satisfy their requirements. And... You know that's it so in, in three weeks we should have the, the no shit legitimate birth certificate where you can file paperwork at your embassy my embassy whatever and we can also get his birth his uh, passport and some people just don't fucking take no for an answer my friends all right ladies let's start walking before I got to jack this guy let's go let's go get the tricycle some people just don't fucking know when to quit you deal with shitheads like this in this country all over the place. This young fucking shithead male that just don't know when to leave you the fuck alone. Alone. Welcome to the Philippines. All right, ladies. And when you when you get look get shitheads like that around you, watch your watch your fucking purse, watch your bag, watch your wallet. They got nothing to fucking lose. All right. Getting a tricycle, folks. Time for some lunch. Thanks for joining me. All right, folks. Just want to do a uh, this quick update on the paperwork for the birth certificate. So we went back to City Hall today. Picked up uh, the documents. Basically, confirms that we transmitted the birth certificate over to. Uh, to call PSO Philippine Statistic Office in San Fernando. So we're we we're pretty much we met all the requirements at City Hall. And in three weeks, we just take that piece of paper, go to the office over there, and pick up the uh, the no shit real you know certified whatever uh, blessed off on birth certificate. And then we took one copy back to the hospital. So we've satisfied the hospital's requirement to, uh, as well. So right now it's just a, it's a waiting game. Three weeks, go pick that up. <clears throat> and uh, he's good to go. And let's see, what else I gonna say? Oh, the wife was supposed to have an appointment today. But what you'll figure out here is like, there's not really an appointment system. There is, but there's not. At least with her doctor, what happens is 
you just call, they'll say, hey, come on Monday. And then Monday morning you call and the assistant will say, come between 9 and 4 or whatever. But a lot of times when you call, there's no clinic. They, they, they say, okay, we have clinic today or we don't have clinic today. So we're supposed to go take her for a checkup today, but you call the doctor and then, ah, there's no clinic today, try tomorrow. And you face that a lot here, at least in our experience you have. You think you're going to go Monday morning at 9? No. You might go Monday at 2 p.m. Or there may not be no clinic on Monday and you got to come back on Tuesday or Wednesday for the clinic. Just part of it, folks. you got to roll with it, embrace it, have patience, and it's no harm, no foul. So we go back to the hospital tomorrow, try to get her an appointment, and take it from there. And it might be the same way with the, with the baby's appointment on Wednesday. You know, you call in the morning and find out if there's a clinic. In other words, if the doctor is going to be there in his office. All right, folks. So I think I'm going to call this pretty good on this video. It's long enough. A little bit of insight into having a kid in the Philippines. Overall, pleasant experience. Price is right. Everybody's okay. Life is good, my friends. I can't complain. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for being a subscriber. And if you are not a subscriber, the uh, bottom right-hand corner of your screen, like right there, somewhere right, right there, little white overstay road sign, or it could be green if I changed it. But anyhow, overstay road sign right there. Go ahead and click that, become a subscriber. And I certainly appreciate it. Folks, one more tidbit of info I want to include on this video. And I'm sitting here right now rocking little Forrest G, chilling. He's chilling. One more, one more thing I want to talk about, right? In the Philippines, and you need to know this, if you're a foreign guy, and again, I hate the word foreign. If you are not from the Philippines, if you've spent a lot of time here, you already know what I'm about to say. And I'm sure you have your own stories that you can include down in the comments where other people can learn. Folks, there are so many superstitions and beliefs in the Philippines. I've been coming here for years. Every time I go to a new area of the Philippines, I hear new shit. All right, now, it's no different than where I'm from. You know, from the backwoods of Mississippi where you have these old wives tales or if somebody said something that didn't make no sense they would preface it by saying well the old folks say you know the old folks say you're not supposed to uh, you know drink milk before you go to bed or just whatever you know all these superstitions and sayings and beliefs so by no means am I casting stones so to speak at the beliefs here in this country because if I sat here and told you all the beliefs of my grandparents even my mother my great-grandparents you know because of well the old folks say you would laugh your ass off right but that's not the purpose of the video the purpose of the video or this segment of the video is, is to remind you and let you know that there are so many superstitions here in the Philippines when it comes to either ghosts, goblins, monsters, imaginary monsters, uh, folks, it's it's just it's very entertaining. I think that's the best way to put it, right? But okay, my wife is from the village, and they have a plethora of these beliefs, and you're not gonna convince them that the beliefs are not are, are, are not real to them it's real just like you're not going to convince them that Jesus uh, didn't walk on water nobody's going to believe that right so the reason I talk about these beliefs is uh, for example my daughter like the first pictures that my daughter's mother sent me of her 
she had this big red thing on her forehead and I'm like what happened to her head and then I started looking closer and I realized oh that's lipstick right and they put lipstick on the baby's head when they they take them outside when they're a baby so to keep the Oswongs away you know these these magical creatures monsters that'll come snatch the baby you know and I'm like get that damn lipstick off her head come on you know it's a baby she don't need to have lipstick smeared all over her forehead but she did and every time she went out you know she's not doing it now but I don't know like the age cut off how many months you got to stop putting lipstick on the baby's head hey uh, Fatima can you explain why we put lipstick on the baby's head huh is it because of the ice wall now see, she don't want to talk about it, right? They believe this stuff, but if you ask them about it or, you know, press them on why they believe it, they, they don't want to talk about it. They just, they believe it, don't talk about it. It scares the shit out of them. So you have all these beliefs. Like my buddy's wife wore garlic around her waist 24 hours a day. And I forget the name of that. Hey, what, what's the name of that garlic when you wear garlic around your waist? She didn't want to talk about it. Anyhow, my buddy's wife wore garlic around her waist, even in the shower. And he paid a lot of money for this in you know, local, local terms. Because uh, you got to go to this witch doctor, this shaman, this uh, you know, quack quack doctor, whoever it is that blesses off or makes these little garlic belts to keep off the evil spirits. And the first time that he showed me this, you know, like I said, I mean, years ago, he said, this is how he said it. He said, hey, we, we were sitting out. I got him. Back off. Baby, relax. Wife coming over here trying to take the baby. Anyhow, what I was saying is, uh, all he said was, what he said was, hey, and we're out in the Baha'i Kubo just, you know, drinking. He's smoking cigarettes. He said at night, you know, kind of dark. But he said, hey, you want to see my wife go ape shit? And I'm like, why? What? What are you talking about? He's like, watch this. He's like, hey, honey, come here. Give me a hug. And she come over there. And he gave her a hug. And then he grabbed something on her belt, you know, under her T-shirt. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And he grabbed it and tried to pull on it. Next thing you know, that girl just started fighting him. I mean, she wasn't playing. He was playing and laughing, and she was fighting him to get away. And, you know, a little excursion that lasted like four or five seconds, you know, and he let her go, and he's laughing, and she started laughing. But I said, what the hell is going What's what, What'd you do? You tickling her? He's like, no, I was trying to get her little garlic thing. And then he said, come here, you know, come here. I'm not going to mess with you. And she showed it to me, whatever, and explained that, you know, she wears that garlic around her waist 24 7 it don't come off it never has since he met the woman the only time it came off was to put a new new and improved version and she believes that and to them it's real so you have to understand the superstitions well like my wife said okay we can't travel with the baby until he gets uh blessed christened whatever and I'm like, well, if you want to have the baby christened down in the village, but we're up here in Angeles City, then how the hell are we going to get from Angeles City to the village? If he's going to get christened in the village, how can he travel? So, folks, these, these are quagmires that, you know, uh, guys like us from the West, we're, we're just trying to talk business, logistics, and numbers. How am I getting from Angeles to the village? I'm looking at flights I'm looking at the ferry schedules and my wife is trying to figure out how we're gonna get him there because he's not blessed and he can't travel okay welcome to the Philippines all right so the big long drawn-out stories here um, especially if you got a girl from way back in the province they have a lot of superstitions and it's going to apply to the baby. So, 
what happened is the, the baby's pediatrician came into the room uh, when we were we were getting discharged, you know, out of the hospital. And I guess the guy's probably late 20s. Um, I don't think he's 30 years old. I'd say the, the doctor's like maybe 28, maybe 30. Nice guy. And he comes in, very soft-spoken. And, you know, he's giving us the, you know, telling us a little bit about what to do, when to come see him, whatever. And then he says, listen, he says, you know, I know, look at my beautiful wife in the background. Now, she knows she don't want to be on YouTube because she's got her hair up like that. But they, her and my girlfriend, I can be sitting here on this video, shooting this YouTube video, and they'll walk by naked in the background. Not once think that this is a YouTube video and if they're in the background naked and I have to edit that out. And I told him, you know, from now on, I'm not editing shit. If you walk through the background naked, it's going on YouTube. I mean, come on, I got the camera here, I'm talking to it, there's a good chance that I'm shooting a video, right? You gotta love them. Anyhow, the doctor says, uh, he looks at my wife and he says, listen, you know, you know there's a lot of superstition here in the Philippines, but let's not, let's not let the baby's care be affected by the superstitions, okay? And I'm like really appreciative that the guy said that because they're not going to listen to me, but they will listen to a doctor. So the doctor basically put the smack down on, on Fatima and Helen of Troy about don't be doing none of this superstitious shit. You know, don't be writing lipstick on the baby's forehead. It's not good for his skin. Don't be doing all this stuff, all right? And I'm sitting there, hey man, preach on to these ladies. And they're sitting over there like, like what the hell is this guy? Oh, hell no, man. They didn't want to listen to him. They're like, no. what? We gotta put lipstick on the baby's forehead if he goes out. So I was very appreciative of the pediatrician, you know, to preach to these ladies and say, look, you know, we know you have these beliefs and these superstitions, but let's not, let's not do that shit to the baby. All right, let's not, let's not go that route. So that's kind of, this little block uh, to go in the video, just to talk about that. I know a lot of my viewers are here from the Philippines. Well, they live, you live in the Philippines. So if you could, weigh in down below in the comments. I mean, ask your wife. Ask your Philippine and say, hey, what are the superstitions, especially when it comes to newborn babies? And leave her information and her beliefs down there because if some guy is coming here to, to the Philippines, he's new, whatever, he can read this stuff and, and get a little bit better understanding of their perspective and what you know what the beliefs are and the customs and the traditions so yeah you know just be aware of this and you know most of it I don't have an issue with but little things like smearing lipstick all over the baby's forehead we're not doing that shit all right um, come on putting lipstick all over your newborn's forehead is not good for their skin uh, you, you're not gonna convince me it is there's no need for that. All right, let's let's come up with an alternative plan where, you know, we're not putting this fucking lipstick on my baby's forehead. We're not doing that. Now, if it if it's something like, oh, well, we, we can't go out on Wednesdays because it's an unlucky day, you know, something like that, whatever. Okay, fine. Maybe we can go on a Thursday. I'll try to bend to the culture. Unless it's going to affect the baby's health, and then, uh, no, we're not we're not doing that. And if, if our logistics require that we get on a ferry and go down to Cebu before the baby is christened, I can't help it. It's your belief that he needs to be christened. You want to do it in the village. Okay, I will get us to the village. But don't sit there and look at me like, well, we can't travel because he's not christened. Come on, it's a chicken before the egg. What are we going to do? So that's just a, folks, just a little tidbit. And I would really like to uh, see what other people have to say down in the comments. 
I could basically write a whole book, and I may actually start a blog post on my website, and I think I'm going to call it, you know, things that my Filipinas believe. And as I hear something new, I'll just write a new paragraph about it, and I'll just keep adding to it. And I guarantee you, within a year, there'll probably be four or five hundred beliefs on there. I mean, you just hear a new one every day. You know, they don't drink, um, my Filipinas don't drink cold water. I guess it's got to be room temperature. Why don't, well, you know, why don't, why don't you drink cold water? Oh, to give you gas. What? Room temperature water is fine, but cold water is going to give you gas. Things like that. But if they've been told this by their mother, their father, their grandparents their whole life, you're not going to change their beliefs. Um, just like I'm not going to sit here and change your beliefs that you've been told your entire life. And it can be something about religion. I'm not going to change your mind. Okay, that takes a lot of time. And some people, they never change their mind because they've been conditioned to believe that since birth. And to admit that that's wrong, they would have to acknowledge that their mother, father, grandparents were wrong as well. Nobody's willing to admit that. It could be something like Republicans or Democrats in the U.S., right? If, if your parents and grandparents are Republicans, well, then you're, by God, you're a Republican and the Democrats are wrong. And you don't even know why. If, if your family's Democrat, well, the Republicans are evil. It's all about how you've been conditioned. You have no idea what the hell really is going on. Most folks don't. Anyhow, back to the, the baby video. Superstitions, a lot of them. Southeast Asia, especially in the Philippines. And be aware of it. Ask your wife what she believes before the baby's born and try to accommodate her on, on most of it, unless it's gonna affect the kid's health, then just, you gotta veto it. You gotta say, no, we're not doing that. I love you, but we're gonna omit that belief because the welfare of the child over, overrides your beliefs, okay? But, you know, talking about these Oswongs and these, what do you call them, baby, Okois, Kokois? It's like a little man in the sand that comes up in the sand and grabs you. So like when you go to the beach, you're scared shitless. A little man is going to come out of the sand and grab the baby. I don't know. I don't know. All right, folks. This little whippersnappers went to sleep. He's just chilling. It's a beautiful day here in the Philippines. All right. This might be the last block that makes it into the video. And again, like I said in the beginning, this is a rambling, just a rambling, put together video. It's like one of those quilts, those quilts of many colors, you know, that you have a patch of fabric and you're just quilting it together. Really no pattern to it. There's no, you know, uniform uh, color, or pattern, whatever. That's this video. This video is like a, I don't know, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like a puzzle that's not put together. You just dump the pieces of puzzle on the floor and you just start trying to piece them together and you're messing it up. That's the way this video is. But today I am drinking a Budweiser. You get Budweiser down at JJ's. And I've said many times, uh, most countries, many of the countries I go, I've been to, I can get a Budweiser. But since I left America, I have never put my hands on a Bud Light and Bud Light was what I used to drink in America now these days I'm into craft beer and good quality quality beer so I don't really enjoy drinking all these mass-produced beers anymore like I used to uh, I'm into the craft scene but if any store in the Philippines has Bud Light imported from the US which apparently licensing you can't do that's the only thing I can figure out it's got to be some type of issue like that but if there's any store in the Philippines that carries Bud Light you let me know and I'm gonna be on the next flight smoking to come get to come get some Bud Light my friends 
you know, what do I miss about America? Chinese food and Bud Light. That's it. I miss some General Cho's chicken, some greasy egg rolls, some of that hot and sour soup. Crab Rangoon. Woo, I miss some Crab Rangoon. Dipping it down in that General Cho's sauce. Woo. But man, if I had some of them egg rolls, sweet and sour sauce with the Crab Rangoon, maybe some, uh, we'll go with sweet and sour chicken as well. Broccoli beef, pork fried rice, mmm. It's kind of funny that I'm over here next to China, near China. But if you go to the Chinese place over here, it's like real Chinese food, right? Because they're catering to the Chinese folks. Chinese food in America is catering to Americans. And so the taste over there is totally different than over here. So I do have Chinese restaurants, you know, in Thailand. There's Chinese places, you know, to to cater to the Chinese tourists coming through, but it is real, authentic, same food you get in China. You don't go in there and look at the menu and find, you know, General Cho's chicken. Ain't on there. I don't even know why I started talking about that. Oh, I'm drinking this Budweiser. Yeah, Bud Light and Americanized Chinese food. I do miss that. Mm. Alright folks, that's the end of this block.